Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back. So, today we are going to talk about uh, laminar non premix flames. Okay. Uh, laminar non premix flames happen when the fuel and the oxidizer are not mixed a priori. So, that is a very natural situation because even in nature or in engines, when you send a fuel uh, a stream inside a combustor, it takes some time to mix. Okay. And if the reactions are fast, you will have uh, flames of course, in a very narrow region which separates the, the fuel and the oxidizer and those are basically called non premix flames. Okay. So, uh, non premix flames are common in, uh, in uh, common in terms of uh, aero engines and uh, uh, they have certain advantages, but they have certain disadvantages also. The advantages is that as we will see that they are very uh, robust in the sense that their position, their stabilization is uh, uh, much more robust that is there they will be found only where the fuel and the oxidizer will be at stoichiometric locations. But on the other hand because of this stoichiometry that is uh, where the fuel and the oxidizer are present in purely stoichiometric conditions, there uh, the problem is that the temperature is also will be very high. We will show this by analysis and uh, also as a result of which it has it produces much more emissions. So, the temperature of non premix flame is difficult to control and uh, but it is uh, it is uh, quite uh, robust in terms of uh, flame stability. Mm, and uh, so, uh, we will see, but the most important thing is that here in the non premix flames you do not have to mix the fuel and the oxidizer a priori. So, um, if you have a actual engine like uh, in a aero gas turbine engine where you have where you send us fuel spray uh, through the injector. So, the fuel spray will basically first atomize that will the spray the cylindrical spray will break up into small droplets and then these droplets will evaporate and then this will this evaporated fuel will actually mix and then will mix uh, and then the mix with the oxidizer rather it will meet with the oxidizer and these positions where they will meet a flame can be formed. In this uh, lectures actually we will see how a droplet actually evaporates and uh, burns and uh, how a non premix flame is essentially formed around the around the droplet. So, in a sense that this this work this um, this uh, topic today of non non premix flames and uh, as you see that we will talk about the canonical structure of the non premix flames. We will see uh, this uh, canonical structure that is a basic structure of non premix flames and this uh, gasification of condensed fuels and stiff and flow and droplet combustion all these problems are of very high importance in terms of an air breathing aero engine right. But you can always ask uh, as I keep reminding you that um, of course, the, the situation in an actual engine is much more complex because in a gas turbine combustor the Reynolds number the turbulent Reynolds number is very high um, because the, as the pressure is high the density is high and the, and the Reynolds number is very high okay. and uh, the combustion happens in a very strongly turbulent state. But then as we will show later that this even the combustion happens in a strongly turbulent state the fuel uh, and the, um, the, the fuel air uh, still there is uh, the fuel air actually mixing is promoted by turbulence. Uh, but still we can think of if we take the entire flame we can find out segments of the flame in which this laminar structure this laminar flame structure will be preserved. So, to understand the unit flame that is a fundamental building block of a big complicated turbulent flame structure, we need to first know how does a laminar flame structure looks like. So, that is the importance of today's study that uh, to understand something complex you have to understand this, the fundamentals first right, you have to understand its basic structure first. So, today's lectures is actually will be dealing with that. So, we will dealing with the fundamentals of laminar non premix flames that is essentially we will deal with laminar non premix flames. But we will see that here uh, what we will study will go a long way in our understanding of what happens in a gas turbine engine and which will come later. So, uh, in previous class 
uh, we have seen that before we go into what kind of problems we will study, we in previous class we have done the governing equations and the constitutive relations and also the coupling function formulation. So, we will take those help, they take help of those governing equations and the coupling function formulations and using those we will study these following problems and phenomena. That is we will study the chambered flame, it is basically a a uh, very ideal non premix flame. It is an example of a ideal laminar non premix flame in which there is no flow, there is no convection. Okay. Of course, in last class you have seen that even if there is flow you can always uh, uh, find a very s uh, find a small region near the flame at the flame where you can think that the flow is negligible or the, or the convective terms are negligible because they are of first order and only the flame can be described between a competition between your diffusion and reaction. So, of course, you one can do the idealization, but in this topic in this chambered flame we will assume that there is no flow as such and only there there will be like species diffusing. Uh, of course, you remember that by flow we mean the flow bulk velocity u, but when you say diffusion we mean the diffusion velocity that is capital V i right. So, here in this in a chambered uh, flame we will only have uh, a diffusion in the sense that uh, only species will be diffusing from two sides and will meet at the flame and then the products will be diffusing out of the flame and also heat will be diffusing out of the flame. So, that is the definition of that is the description of a chamber flame we will come into that. Then we will consider this condensed fuel vaporization and condensation if you take a if you take a beaker or if you take a uh, take a uh, uh, take a vessel which is half filled with water say and then we continuously blow wind on the top of this uh, vessel. So, as to remove any fuel any any this uh, liquid uh, vapor accumulation the vapor of the liquid accumulation uh, and then uh, we will see how does we can describe that. Of course, that is a as you will see later that this will be essentially a precursor to this study. So, um, uh, we will uh, then you want after after we have done this study of uh, condensed fuel vaporization and condensation we will move on to um, droplet vaporization and condensation all right. Uh, so, that is uh, as you know that as I have told you that droplet vaporization and condensation is a problem of paramount importance for understanding any uh, air breathing engines because as we have seen previously that uh, the most important fact uh, that combustion is indispensable in air breathing engines is because of the fact that liquid fuels have extremely high energy density. And that is why you can basically you can in a, sm a small amount of mass you can carry a lot of energy actually. Okay. So, how do you get energy, how do you convert the, the chemical energy to thermal energy, the chemical energy stored in the liquid fuel to thermal energy. Of course, reactions in this cases does not happen in the liquid phase. So, first you have to basically convert the the droplets or the other liquid into essentially into fuel vapor and then in the fuel vapor and the oxidizer can mix and you can have a flame and you can generate heat and then you can do the uh, accelerate that heated flow and then can generate thrust or you can use a turbine to generate the required power to drive the compressor right. So, that is why uh, uh, this this uh, topic of this fuel vapor uh, fuel vaporization and condensation is so very important all right. So, uh, uh, we will go into uh, these three topics today and uh, first uh, the topic is this one that is the first we will talk about the chambered flame all right. What is a chambered flame? First we have to basically understand its structure. So, uh, uh, this is the structure of the chambered flame at different levels of complexity ok. Uh, so, uh, here what is happening is that let us consider first let us consider and focus on this part that is in the top part all right that is this part. So, what is happening here is a suppose on the left hand side you have a fuel region pure fuel how can you have that you practically you can have a porous plug essentially. So, on that you can have a fuel region ok uh, and which contains purely fuel and on the then you have a uh, some uh, um, consider some uh, uh, some space uh, some air in between and then you have essentially an oxidizer region ok. And uh, now basically suppose you uh, this fuel will because here there is no fuel on and here there is no oxidizer the fuel essentially will uh, diffuse from this fuel region and will go towards the towards the oxidizer region and this oxidizer will go towards the fuel region. But of course, this is just by diffusion and not by bulk motion right. Now, if you have a flame inside the situation will change 
because so if you have a flame inside that is this is the flame mm, the situation will change because now you basically have fuel uh, uh, will be consumed at the flame region and you will also have oxidizer consumed in the flame region and on the this on and re in return the this flame region or the reaction zone will basically give heat out on both these two sides the heat will conduct or diffuse on these two sides and it will also you know, the products will also diffuse on these two sides okay so, if the in reality the this this region where this happens uh, in, in reality where this um, uh, where the the, the uh, where this uh, reaction happens that has a finite thickness ok, but uh, the but at the same time this this region is very small because we, we have seen that um, because of the large activation energy the reaction zone is always very thin alright. So, uh, 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 of course, it will, but it will still definitely have some thickness. Now, if it has some thickness, what will happen is that we will have a structure similar to this, where the temperature will increase. T zero. Uh, let's give the definition now. Let's say that the f uh, fuel mass concentration, pure fuel uh, mass fraction, that is the mass fraction of fuel on this fuel region, is essentially y f zero. Now, please keep this um, this. Uh, 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 nomenclature in mind because we will use this throughout this class. So, on the left hand side you have this um, fuel mass concentration fuel mass fraction of y f 0. Now, why is it not equal to 1 because you can also have some inert in the fuel the fuel can be a mix of like say hydrogen mixed with nitrogen ok. So, then the amount of the mass fraction of fuel mass fraction of hydrogen is essentially given by y f 0 whereas, 1 minus y f 0 is the mass fraction of nitrogen like that. Similarly, on the right hand side you have uh, basically the, um, uh, the, the uh, you have the, the uh, fuel uh, we have the oxidizer and the mass fraction of the oxidizer that is a pure mass fraction of oxygen is essentially y o l. Of course, this can have an air. So, this is my 1 minus y o l is equal to the mass fraction of nitrogen all right. So, now uh, let us say the left hand side temperature is uh, T 0 and the right hand side temperature T L. T 0 is not equal to T L because the fuel region and the oxidizer region need not be at the same temperature. All right. Now, say let us say now you have a flame. So, if you have a flame then the temperature this this is the region where the flame is. So, then the temperature will have a show a curve ok and then the fuel of course, uh, the fuel mass fraction will decrease and then it will decrease. But if the, there is a finite reaction zone this will not be immediately not be 0 and there will be some reactant uh, some some uh, fuel leakage through this reaction zone ok. And then similarly this oxidizer will decrease and then it will also slightly can leak through the reaction zone. Okay, but now, uh, we will not consider this description, we will just consider a simplified description where we will say that uh, basically we are taking a zoomed out view where the reaction zone we will not consider any thickness of the reaction zone. We will consider the reaction zone to be essentially a sheet that is the activation energy is so large and the re, uh, reaction rate is so fast that the entire um, uh, reactions is concentrated in a thin sheet of infinitesimally small thickness and as a result there is no uh, reaction zone only a reaction sheet and in that case of course, your T 0 and um, T L will have a sharp uh, boundary within the, the uh, of course, it is the temperature is not discontinuous, but it will be discontinuous in the derivatives ok. And then if the reaction of course, if the reaction this reaction sheet is an approximation of a of an infinite reaction rate and um, uh, uh, and then what we will say is that uh, in the in this reaction sheet uh, limit will uh, so when we say infinite reaction rate we mean that the reaction rates are very very fast compared to other processes in the in the system essentially like diffusion. So, essentially this problem will be diffusion controlled because the reaction time scales are very very small and of course, when the reaction rates are very fast then everything is consumed as such then there is no leakage you see there is no leakage here and then y f 0 uh, becomes uh, 0 right after at right at x f which is the flame location. So, in this uh, one dimensional uh, picture this is the um, uh, uh, this x f is the flame location. Of course, you can see that now it is clear why this is a one dimensional uh, uh, problem because uh, these regions are essentially uh, are infinite in, in these two both directions uh, in both this uh, up and down direction. So, this problem is essentially one dimensional mm, and uh, then the uh, temperature increases up to the flame uh, then it decreases uh, from the flame location to the to the right hand boundary and uh, then of course uh, you have um, uh, this uh, oxidizer also goes to zero at xf 
and uh, there is no oxidizer leakage from the um, uh, uh, from uh, from XF. So that is an um, uh, important uh, point that uh, we need to uh, basically consider. So beyond XF, there there is no fuel on the right hand side, and before XF, there is no oxidizer on the left hand side. So essentially, the general structure, as you see, is the flame in this. Um, uh, now we call this essentially a non-premix flame. We got people also call this a diffusion flame in the because uh, you see uh, in a um, uh, this is this problem is we will see that essentially it is diffusion controlled because the reaction zones are uh, reaction rates are much much faster than the diffusion process. So uh, then the diffusion becomes a rate limiting step and as such uh, for uh, uh, the the problem becomes diffusion controlled and people call this flame a diffusion flame. But that is slightly bit slightly misleading because uh, that implies that premix flames in premix flames diffusion process is not important which is of course not true in premix flames also diffusion is important in diffusion in non premix flames or non diffusion flames are also diffusion process is very important in all flames diffusion is very very important and as a result of this we will call this instead of diffusion flames we will call this non premix flames okay so because you see that uh, the reason is simple because the fuel and oxidizer they do not meet and they are not premixed a priori okay so they only meet at and they only get mixed at the reaction sheet of the reaction zone so this uh, general structure is essentially i uh, going back this general structure is essentially a thin reaction zone separating a broad fuel rich zone from the broad oxidizer rich zone so this is much broad this is much broad this is very very thin okay so that is why it is uh, we call this nomenclature. Now, uh, as we have seen that uh, for infinitely fast reaction compared to diffusion, mm, uh, that is uh, reaction reaction rate itself need not be infinitely fast. We just consider it to be infinitely fast compared to diffusion. Okay, it's much much faster than diffusion process because as we diffusion is a slow process, and uh, the reaction zone shrinks to a sheet. And we call this uh, becomes a phenomenon as diffusion control. We call this diffusion flame, but uh, we will call this non-premix flame because, uh, as we said, that both premix flames and diffusion flames or non-premix flames both are diffusion controlled essentially. So, and uh, this is the thing where when 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 we consider a finite but large reaction rate, uh, that when the reaction because zone becomes broadened and reactants leak to the flame and excessive leakage will lead to extinction. So, this is the reaction leakage phenomena that I was uh, talking about. So, you see that this does not go to 0 here, neither this goes to 0 here. All right. So, from uh, now we will uh, just uh, uh, recall the coupling function, uh, function uh, formulations uh, previously uh, that we did in, uh, in the previous class. So, we uh, defined this stoichiometrically weighted mass fractions as this one y y tilde is equal to 1 by sigma i n y i divided by y n b n is a reference species which is not defined yet it can we have to define it can be fuel oxidizer product etc b is the boundary location so in this case the boundary y and b can be essentially y f 0 where in where we consider fuel to be the reference species and b boundary to be essentially the left hand side boundary okay i'll come to this and also this uh, sigma i n is the stoichiometric coefficient and uh, this is defined as the ratio of uh, molecular weight times the difference of the stoichiometric coefficients divided by the molecular weight of the reference species times the difference of the stoichiometric coefficients and then we defined a stoichiometrically weighted non dimensional enthalpy and temperature h s tilde and t tilde and uh, uh, these things are uh, uh, as you will uh, see that uh, essentially delta H s and delta T are essentially delta H s tilde and delta uh, T tilde will be or H s tilde will be essentially equal to T tilde minus T 0 tilde will be same essentially this will definitions will be very close and we will use it interchangeably. And this Q C n that is defined here is the chemical heat release uh, uh, that uh, which, uh, uh, is normalized by the this W n times W uh, the difference of the stoichiometric coefficients we will come to this. And uh, then we will see that here using this we will come uh, uh, we can define a non dimensional uh, we can define a species enthalpy coupling function can be defined as t tilde plus y a tilde. Just to recall how we did this uh, if you remember that when convection could I mean in the flame zone we uh, we considered that the convection to be could be ignored um, uh, because uh, it was essentially a competition between diffusion and your reaction and assuming that the process is steady state we arrive at this uh, equation. gradient of lambda by C p times gradient of sensible enthalpy 
is equal to heat release rate this came from your energy equation and radiant of rho d i times radiant of y i is equal to minus w y that is the consumption or production rate of individual species that came also from your species equation and these were like distinct diffusivity formulation all right and then uh, if we consider a one step combustion reaction which is given by nu of tilde f plus nu o goes to that is fuel these are stoichiometric coefficients you already know this is the fuel this is oxidizer goes to product in one step then we can define y f tilde is equal to y f by y f 0 whereas 0 is essentially our left hand side boundary and y o tilde is equal to y oxidizer mass fraction of oxidizer divided by sigma for the oxidizer divided by y f at the boundary reference we have chosen n to be the reference species and h s is equal to h s sensible enthalpy by y f 0 q c and t tilde is equal to c p t divided by y f 0 q c whereas q c this chemical heat release is nothing but summation k is equal to 1 to capital n h k enthalpy of formation specific enthalpy of formation molecular weight this thing divided by the reference species which is our fuel okay and then sigma i because your here we also define sigma uh, sigma i is nothing but or sigma o is nothing but w o new o double dash minus new o dashed divided by w f new f double dashed minus new f dashed all right and then uh, of course with this simplification we have already shown shown that uh, we can arrive at this equations that is laplacian of h s tilde is equal to c p by lambda times w n and del square y i tilde by Lewis number of i species is equal to minus c p by lambda times w n whereas w n is equal to capital w n times new n double dash minus new n dashed times y f 0 times this omega which is the species independent reaction rate uh, we will just write it here because it is not visible And of course, if this is fuel, or we can keep it actually as n, whereas n is equal to like fuel, okay. You can write in terms of the fuel, fine. 
So now then of course we see that if we add these two things, if we add these two equations on the right hand side vanishes and we can write as this as delta square beta i is equal to 0 where beta i is actually instead of enthalpy we can just write in terms of t tilde that is because your what is your t tilde minus t 0 tilde is essentially uh, your uh, h s tilde right. So, uh, that is why uh, uh, we can we can uh, uh, we can uh, um, uh, write this uh, as uh, in, in terms of uh, your uh, your uh, t tilde instead of h s tilde and we can write beta is essentially equal to y i tilde by l i. So, uh, this this derivation is uh, is uh, involves much symbols, but is actually very straightforward. So, I suggest you do this on your own and then everything will become very very clear. So, but in the end the advantage is that this whole complicated equation you see the beauty is that the whole complicated equation just becomes a Laplace equation ok with no uh, with uh, with uh, the right hand side equal to 0 and your this is your coupling function uh, beta i is, is equal to t tilde plus y i tilde by Lewis number i. Uh, 